Hello, I'm Dr. Dempsey, and this is the Allied Trades Assistance Program. Today we're going to present to you an education class in OxyContin. Um, this will be a brief discussion about OxyContin and a couple other features of it that we think that our members really should understand. Okay, the first thing is OxyContin is what is called a narcotic. Its, de its design is to help somebody who has what is called an end-stage illness. You know, an end-stage illness doesn't mean death. It means an illness that they've tried other medications first with, but have not worked. The design of OxyContin is brilliant. It's a, very, it's a wonderful drug that helps folks who have illnesses such as cancer or have terrible pain disorders that they will have for a while. And that second part is very important. OxyContin, by design, is for somebody who has a long-term pain problem. It is not a medication for somebody who is going to have a pain problem for a few weeks or even a month. It's, it's a, a medication that is supposed to be used ongoing. Now, that in itself will have implications that we'll talk about in a couple minutes. But before I really get to any of the other topics that I want to talk to with OxyContin, I want to, I want to share a story with you. I work for the Department of Corrections um, in a state on the East Coast. And one of the things that we see every year is we see individuals who are incarcerated for vehicular homicide. And what often happens is a truck driver or an individual who works for a living will be driving for many days on very little sleep. And what often that creates is pain in your lower back and your legs. And so a lot of the individuals who drive for a living will take medication. And sometimes what they do is they take medication that is not theirs. And it's very important to understand if you are taking a medication that is not yours, that is not only not smart, it's illegal. And if you get into a car accident and that car accident results in harm to the other person um, or death, that will not be an accident anymore. That will be a crime. And at least 10 times a year I see individuals in the prison for just that. They were using an Oxycontin or something like an Oxycontin, maybe an Oxycodone, or maybe somebody's fentanyl, which is a little bit different, but similar. Um, and they wind up getting in the accident, and then when they are tested, they are found to have these substances in their system, and then they do not have a script for it, and they wind up having time served for that. Now, that story is pretty extreme, but things like that happen every day. That does not mean that the medication itself is evil. It means that when the people are using it inappropriately, bad things can happen. Okay, so what is Oxycontin? Oxycontin is a narcotic, which means that it blocks pain. Um, and we want that if we have a long-term pain problem. Because if we have a pain problem that we do not deal with, what we will find is we'll become depressed. And in one of our other slides, we will talk about depression. So again, OxyContin is a very nice medication for somebody with an end-stage disorder. Now, OxyContin is a long-acting oxycodone, which again is a narcotic. OxyContin was created to help people get eight hours of sleep instead of having to get up three or four times a night because of their pain. The OxyContin will allow them to get a full bundle of sleep together, which will help reduce the pain and the depression over time. What some people have learned, and some of this came from the media and some of it just came from street interactions, is that if you crush up an OxyContin, you will destroy the time release factor. The problem with that is you get all of that painkiller within a very short amount of time. And when that happens, some people can overdose from that. And we have seen thousands of fatal overdoses because of crushing a time release with that medication. Now again, that does not mean that the medication itself is problematic. It means how it's used is problematic. Okay. Now, how do you use an OxyContin or a medication like OxyContin? You use it exactly as it's prescribed. Because what happens when you take a painkiller is your body starts to get used to it over time. That's called tolerance. And as your body starts to tolerate it, you may need more medication. But the reason you go to a doctor is so the doctor can treat that condition that you have. You should not take it upon yourself to take more medication than is prescribed because that in itself can be fatal. And one of the reasons it can be fatal and one of the reasons people overdose is your body chemistry is different every day. And so when you take a medication today, you're not going to have the same reaction to that medication the same way that you did as yesterday. So it's even more important not to take more of that medication 
than was prescribed to you. And that also leads to who you should see to have that medication prescribed. General practitioners are really a nice first line source of information for us when we have medical problems. But they typically are not trained well enough in disorders such as pain to really help you through the, the condition that you have. You should never be prescribed OxyContin by a general practitioner more than one time. If you are getting a refill from your general practitioner, that's problematic. And it's problematic because that general practitioner is not trained in pain disorders. So who should prescribe it? It should be prescribed in, conju in conjunction with a pain management program. And there are pain management programs throughout the city of Philadelphia as well as nationally. And it's very important to get into a pain program if you need OxyContin because a pain program can help you learn how to deal and live with this long-term pain issue. Okay? The second thing is that, again, you should never take anybody else's pain medication because let's say you have an accident and you get, dr you get drug tested because of that. When that happens, you will be found responsible. You may even lose your job. Okay? So what do you do if you find yourself using OxyContin and you didn't want to continue to take it? OxyContin is what is called physically, it, it creates physical dependence by design. Now, physical dependence is not the same thing as an addiction. An addiction includes physical and psychological components, as well as other social features. Physical dependence that is caused by OxyContin is caused because your body needs that pain blocker after a period of time. There are some things that happen inside your, inside your cells that your cells change as you take a medication. If you stop taking OxyContin, Without being weaned off of it, you are going to go through a physical withdrawal. The physical withdrawal can have significant mental distress and medical distress, um, predominantly the medical distress. And often what will happen is as an individual is taken off of OxyContin, they do not know how to deal with the pain, and they start using illicit substances such as heroin or other things that other people give them. And again, this person did not start out with the intent of having an addiction or a physical dependence, but that medication creates that. And it creates it just as a consequence of, of its design. So that points again to why you want to have a medical professional who specializes in pain working with you. Coming off of OxyContin is possible. What has to happen is you, you get weaned down from that medication. And sometimes you get weaned down from that medication with a combination of other medications. And once you're off all those medications, you are learning how to deal with your pain in a very smart and a very significant way. Again, OxyContin is not an evil medication. It is an excellent medication, but it needs to be used for a very specific purpose. You should not be getting it from your general practitioner long term, and you should never take somebody else's medication. If you find you are physically dependent and you do not have a physician who can help you get down off of that medication, what you want to do is you want to contact the treatment provider. You can contact the Allied Trades Assistance Program at 1-800-258-6376 or 215-677-8820.